Welcome, parents, teachers, administrators, to the Teacher Parent Collaborative Series, Episode 4, Building a School Community in a Digital World. My name is Tanya Ordinola. I'm your Digital Ambassador for 2021-2022. These videos can be assessed through the Nevada Digital Learning Collaborative for the Nevada Department of Education. Tanya Ordinola, I've been a teacher for CCSD for about 14 years. If you need to reach me for anything digital learning related, or if you have questions or need help, you could email me at T O R D I N O L A dot nvdlc at gmail.com. So the Teacher Parent Collaborative Series has a motto and I always wanna share it because this is what we want to do to help parents. Our goal is to inspire and support digital learning. We will offer resources like videos, expert panels, and helpful digital learning tips. In addition, we will work together to support each other through a new digital way of learning. Through teamwork and collaboration, we will join forces to ensure our students' success. And like I always say, that's the one goal that unites us. That's the one goal that teachers, parents, administrators, we all have in common is to see our students succeed. Our next episode, episode five, coming to you from the Teacher Parent Collaborative Series in April is the struggle is real, student motivation, right? We all need that even as adults, we need motivation and students even more, especially with the new way of learning, which is digital blended learning. They need help with motivation and I'll be talking about that. I wanna to talk to you now about how we build. Take a minute to think about that. How do you build things? Well, first you need the material, right? When I'm gonna build something, I'm gonna write a list. Do I need lumber, nails? What else am I gonna need? I try to make a design. This is what I'm going to be building, right? And maybe I find um, some helpful friends that can join with me to help me build together. When we work together, we're more successful. have a quote by John Lennon, a dream you dream alone is a dream. A dream you dream together is reality. When we join together, we're at our most powerful. What are you going to need today for this webinar? A notebook, open mind, and to set some goals. Once you hear something you like or a resource that you might want to access or get the link from, you know, use all the research and the resources to your advantage to help your students be more successful. So today's agenda, building a school community in a digital world, we're gonna talk about digital transformations that we've all experienced, students, teachers, and schools. We're gonna talk about digital equity and a merit of resources that can be there to help you. And then my little corner in all my webinars is gonna be more reading resources because I hear from parents, tell us more about reading, 
tell us what else we can do. And if I get the same um, request with this webinar, I'll just call the next reading resource. Maybe I'll call it reading resources three so we can move on from there and build on that. Headlines, I always like to share headlines and how important technology is to education. The School of Education, that is a online journal said that BUILT, which is a group of researchers, report that 92% of teachers understand the impact of technology in education. Project Tomorrow, which is another group of researchers, reports that 59% of middle school students say that digital education tools have helped them with their education. And technology in all as a whole with this push that the pandemic has brought upon us has been very helpful and has helped us see what is out there to help with our students' education. We also have a journal, World Economic Forum, that says that the pros of technology, our technology tools have become so popular that the educational technology market is projected to expand to $342 billion market by 2025. And the cons, which is something that we're gonna be talking about here while we're building a digital community is that um, some students thrive online while others fall behind for various factors like support at home or, research, or resources they received in school or some are lacking technology at home. Educational Digital Transformation. First, I'm gonna to talk to you about our digital everyday life. Students are learning online. They're learning through blended learning, meaning some students are in the classroom, some are online, some are full-time, digital learners, and our students must be given the knowledge to help them make good choices when using technology every day. In addition, students need to be encouraged to make their daily learning meaningful through technology. Meaningful learning can happen even if students are learning digitally. Meaningful learning happens if students are engaged in critical thinking problem solving and metacognitive skills. Bottom line, even though students are learning digitally, they, they also can have meaningful learning. They also can be encouraged to critical think, problem solve and use their metacognitive skills. Digital transformation for students. Education today has gone through a digital transformation. And I think we can all agree with that. Our job is to equip our students with skills and knowledge for their digital future. We are sharing the importance of education with students every day. Technology is used everywhere and it's made students' lives easier with information and videos for students to learn and help support their educational education actively. I always talk about active learning. Now students have, if we teach them, the resources at hand for them to either gain enrichment on a topic that they've 
liked learning about like robotics or computer or coding, they can look for videos. They can look for different things to help enrich their learning. Also, if they don't understand or didn't get the concept because many students learn in different ways, they can also access videos and information to help them know how to proceed with their assignments. Transformation for teachers. Digital transformation for teachers has been positive for most. Teachers have had to come up with digital solutions. They've had to be in the lab thinking, what can we do? What can we do different for our lessons? Digital transformation has happened in many subjects in areas like art and physical education, just to name a few. In addition, the pandemic has given teachers valuable experience on how to transfer standard classroom teaching on, to an online platform. One of the most valuable transfers is preparing for tests and taking tests online. And as teachers, we have been back in the lab seeing how we can transfer our lessons that we used to give in person and how we can transfer those and they can be successful online as well. And it gets a little trickier when it's blended learning, when you have some students learning from home and some learning from the classroom because you want the learning to be meaningful and valuable to both students. Digital transformation for schools. Schools have been tasked with creating creative solutions for student technology. Schools have worked hard to bridge the divide between students who have access to technology and those who don't. The transformation of digital schools has seen schools give students take home technology and give parents resources to access the internet through community resources. Some factors that are contributing to the technology divide have been income levels, geographical restrictions, and digital literacy. So that's a thought. What can we do to build a digital community where all students are at an even playing field? And we'll discuss that more. And now I wanna to talk to you about digital equity through school community. Digital equity through school. Policy makers and educators want to ensure that technology narrows achievement gaps. However, it's important to remember that a student's lack of access to technology widens those achievement gaps. One of the significant issues in the fight for digital equity from school administrators is funding for technology. The best way to fight digital equity is to work together and not push the responsibility on party policymakers or schools or parents. That's why I called it built this episode building a community in a digital world, what can we do? There's not one person responsible that we can pass the responsibility of technology and equity for students. We need to come together. Some resources, great. GWS.ALA.org, and that's a great website for kids. Um, it's connected to the American Library Association, and it 
has digital media, which includes all sorts of digital medias, not just websites, for students to also access new books. We also have faces.ccsd.net, and that is where parents and family provide are provided primary educational environments for children. Students thrive when their families are engaged in helping them learn. And we've talked about that in my previous episodes. We also have dhhs.nv.gov. And these programs are for Nevada Early Intervention that helps children um, who may have delays or disabilities and their families. So if families are concerned, they can go here to the site and they can have their student evaluated free of charge and then referred directly to professionals that can help assist them. We also have ccsd.net, Division Student Support, Child Find, and the Child Find Project uh, for Clark County School District is designed to identify and evaluate the educational needs of students from ages three to 21 who may have delays. And it's just a good resource to help parents find help. Digital equity community. How can the community help? Everyone can support digital equity. Poli political leaders can help as well. For example, the Next Century Cities Group, supported by Ford Foundation, is a new effort that allows mayors to commit their cities to the next generation broadband. 100 mayors have supported these initiatives in less than a year. And it's just to make sure that not just some, but all our community is able to access broadband, internet, technology, which will help their students get the, their education and help them succeed and help The community resources that I can share, especially for broadband, internet, and technology, we have the FCC Lifeline program. It helps community consumers receive benefits towards phones or internet services. U.S. Department Housing of Urban Development, Connect Home USA, and this is a public housing authority that helps residents with free affordable in-unit internet services. And I wanna tell you parents as being a teacher through our new digital way of life, there are some parents that even use their phones to gain access to Canvas and Google Classroom for their children's education. To share with you a quote, communication. A good relationship starts with communication. We all need to communicate. Parents, teachers, administrators, we all have to be patient and communicate so we can help each other. If there's a resource that you're lacking, come to the school, let the teacher know, and we will give you all the resources that we have at hand. Digital equity, communication. How can we bridge the digital divide? We can bridge the divide through community involvement and conservation. But first we must address the issues to help come up with solutions. Digital inequity is not an education or teacher problem. It takes a village to develop a workable solution. And like I say, together we can. We can build a community where all students have access to everything that they need. 
Here's some teacher resources. We have the Public Education Foundation, which is a store where teachers at a low cost can get things that they need for the classroom, even some technology and definitely different supports that they can offer there. They provide supplies, resources to teachers for our public school students. Business support. Digital equity in business. Like I'm saying, everyone can come together. Believe it or not, our local businesses want to help to donate to our local schools. Some cities work with Google Fiber and other telecommunication firms to ensure broadband access for all the neighborhood. These efforts support the lowest income families and they help schools and libraries. So even our businesses want to come and build a digital community. And teacher response. The SLC parent panel was comprised of parents sharing their struggles with digital learning, what they would like to see more in the classroom, and some parents sharing successes that they've seen through digital learning. So today we will hear from the parents and I will provide a teacher response. Three children, a girl in ninth grade and a boy in eighth grade and a boy in third grade. I would like as a basic principle for every child to be given a computer so as not to disrupt their home. In Las Vegas and in my, I have knowledge in my personal school in Las Vegas, we have provided every child through distance or blended learning technology. Also, the schools have provided um, parents with resources so they can get free internet or broadband and given them information on the direct resources to support them. As for homework, she would like communication with the homework. As I've stated in episode one and two, we do have Google Classroom. And through Google Classroom, you're able to see assignments, different information. Also, you have Clever uh, for some schools, and there you can see how your student's doing. Also, through Infinite Campus. If you're not familiar with these, please um, go to episode one and two, where I speak more on that. But that would be a great help to a parent who's new to technology and they're just wondering, how is my student doing? Those would be great resources they can access to really make them feel comfortable and know that, they're, that they are on track and they're helping their students and their students are succeeding with their homework and studies. My name is Sarai. I have two children. One is in high school, 11th grade and the other goes to middle school, seventh grade. I would like teachers to do a class schedule or itinerary, a routine schedule where math is taught, for example, eight through nine, or science from 9.30 to 10.30. Um, that way, as parents, we can be attentive to see if our children are attending classes, I'd also like for the teachers to have more communication with parents. Response to that is definitely every student should have a class schedule. And as she mentioned, giving um, the parents knowledge of what the next courses are. But that's mainly for middle school and high school. So for elementary, as teachers, we also have a guideline, a schedule that we keep throughout the day where we consistently do, for example, I'll share my schedule. We can do 7.45 to 8.45 reading, 8.45 to 9.45 language, 9.45 to 10.45 math, 
So feel free to ask your teachers that you would like to schedule. It would be as easy as us just sending you a copy we already have in our computers, or if for some reason some schools out here in Nevada wouldn't have that schedule at hand, it would be very easy to type up a schedule and share with the parents so they can feel more comfortable. And as the mom said, she just wants to know that her students are focusing on the core classes which are like math, science, and English. And as far as homework and knowing if the homework is being turned in, almost like the other um, parent mentioned, like I said, we have the great resources, which are clever in a lot of schools in Las Vegas. We students' assignments and also test scores. And like I said before, if you're not familiar with those, please go to episode one and episode two, because I talk about those in great detail. Next, we have Viviana Montano. I have three children. One is in elementary school and two are in high school. My first experiences were a bit difficult because adapting to this new system was very complicated. especially for my son. But having discipline every day, I think we've been able to succeed and advance. So my response to that is, yes, it has been difficult. It's been a learning curve for all of us as educators, as parents, and I'm sure as administrators, there's been a lot of different things that we've had to go back to the lab and fix and come back. And so I was glad to hear that this parent was able to feel like now she's successful and that her student will be able to move on to the next academic school year, like she said, with discipline and routine. And it's just not giving up like anything else. If you do it every day, practice makes perfect. So just know that soon you'll be a pro at digital learning. Thank you. My name is Fabiola. I have three children, a girl in high school and in ninth grade, and then a boy in sixth grade and a girl in pre-kindergarten. My experience has not been very good, especially with my son. I don't like the current system under which students are working because he's falling behind on his homework. They say that he doesn't turn in his homework, but I've been on him and I see that he does do his homework and turn it in. But when I talk to his teachers, at times they are late to getting back to me and they'll tell me that he hasn't turned in his homework. And so my experience hasn't been positive. The response is that for some parents, Online learning, digital learning, blended learning has come easier and they've been able to get a better grasp of what's going on. For other parents, as I mentioned in response to that previous parent, have had more of a difficult time. Like I said, practice makes perfect. Some of us do enjoy learning new things and knowing all about digital learning. For some, it's a little more frustrating she did say that she sees her son doing his homework and that he is turning it in and it takes, you know, a bit to get a response. Like I, like I tell my parents, we have to be patient with everyone. We have to be patient with our students, with our teachers, and with our parents. Through digital learning, we have more questions and more responses that we need to get back to, but that's no reason that as digital learning is continuing and improving, you should, you should by now be hearing more feedback and a quicker response to your questions. And as far as his assignments not being done and her uh, wanting to verify that with the teacher, um, sometimes my suggestion to that parent would be sometimes upload is the issue. Some students do their work, 
But then when it comes to taking a picture and uploading it, they don't take a picture of all the work or they happen to take a picture of the assignment when it's blank. And if we don't see the um, answers or the work, we can't give them a grade for that. Again, for this mom, another a good tool that I would suggest for her is again, Infinite Campus, Google Classroom or Clever, where she can see what was turned in. And in those platforms, she could even write a question right on the assignment. Like I saw, you know, my son do this assignment and I saw him upload it. So may you let me know, do we need to do it again? Or did he not understand the concept? And maybe that would help um, ease, you know, the frustration that she's feeling right now. My name is Sylvia Ramirez. I have three children, a 13-year-old girl and a 10-year-old boy and a five-year-old boy. I've always had a positive experience in my children's schools. But in this situation, I feel that classes on Zoom are inadequate so that kids can be ready for the next school year. I also feel that parents and teachers should work with routines and disciplines. So as a teacher um, response, like I said, we've all been given a learning curve and now that time has transpired and we've done more digital learning, we have more ideas on to improve the students' learning. Also, we have enrichment resources to help the students catch up we're all trying our best. We are all trying to reach the one goal that unites us, which is student success. So I guess now digital learning has been going on for quite longer. We are now maybe what I say pros and we're able to see where a student's lacking, provide enrichment. Of course, we wanna make sure that they're ready for the next school year. That is our, our goal, that they're ready and that the students feel confident. And I think now that we have gone through so many learning curves, now I think what's being done is to put in place things, programs, enrichments that are gonna help our students meet those areas that they're lacking in and help them feel confident. The Madania, Gilberto, and I have one student in 11th grade. I've had a very good experience, and I want to thank the teachers and administrators of the school for the support that they have given my son. And I also want to thank them for including me in my son's education. So the teacher response would be, thank you very much, Mr. Gilberto. We are so happy when, as teachers, when we hear parents giving us positive feedback, saying that he feels that digital learning has gone well and that he is communicated with and feels part of his high school students' education. When we hear positive feedback, honest positive feedback because if a parent isn't feeling supported we want to know that too so we want to know what we can do again i remind you we have one goal and that goal is student success and that's the goal that unites us therefore when we do hear positive comments where the teacher and the parent have made a good connection and have been able to help the student that really inspires us and it helps us know we're on the right track and helps us continue to my experience with teachers has been very good but realistically um it has changed the situation for the lack of time and how to navigate a system that's new here at home I also would like teachers to have more communication with parents 
So my response is, as before, it's been a learning curve for all of us. We all need to be patient with each other. I keep hearing from the parents' communication, so I feel as an educator and other educators that may be listening to this, maybe that's one thing that we all need to join together and work on. I am someone who in my classroom, I would rather over-communicate than under-communicate, so I will call, I will send emails, and I will write like notes and put it on the children's folders so if the parent misses one they're able to to have somewhere else where they can look and if they miss an email or a phone call maybe the children's folder can give them the information so that's one thing that i'm going to continue to work on and as hearing from the parents that's one thing that they would appreciate us to improve areas that we can improve on and just get better. So that's one thing that I'm going to keep in mind. So she says her name is Cecilia. She has a girl in fourth grade. My message is to include me in my child's education, parents, students, and teachers working together on establishing routine. And my response to her is well said because we all need to work together. That is how we'll reach our goal. We all need to be patient with each other. And that is the only way that we will achieve success. And like we said, through communication is another way that we can just work together to reach our ultimate goal of successful, thriving students. And I leave you with this. I want to thank the parent panel. I'm glad that I was able to give a response to their questions. And I want to leave with this. Education is a shared commitment between dedicated teachers, motivated students, and enthusiastic parents with high expectations. Thank you. And now we have more reading resources. Here we go. More reading resources. In episode three, I shared reading resources. In episode two, there was a section about reading resources. But as the episodes go on, I hear from parents saying, help us with reading, reading and more reading. So I call this more reading and it's more reading resources. I'm going to talk about reading research, favorite interests, read alouds, and reading apps, and then at the end, something super solid gold. So reading research with kids and our younger students, which would be 11 and under. Reading research has shown that letter sounds help students. Students need to know a combination of letters, and they need to be able to predict the certain sounds that these letters make. Systematic phonics is a reliable way to teach young children to read. Now, I always like to relate what I'm saying to my classroom, and I want to let you know that letter sounds are very important in our classroom. And here where we are almost starting the second semester, and pretty much all of my students have mastered their letter sounds. I'm going to continue to review with them, and I'm going to continue to do letter sound games, different things that I can do to make sure that as they start first grade, they have mastered their full letter sounds completely. Now, reading research for teens, I always hear that it's 
I don't teach teens, but it is so hard um, to get teens to read. Research shows that teens read at least once a week to once a month, and that reading for teens lowers as they get older. Reading for fun drops off dramatically after the tween years, and 38% of tweens say they enjoy reading a lot compared to 24% of teens who say they do not enjoy reading. And 35% of tweens say that they're daily readers compared to 22% of teens that say they do not read daily. For some reason, research has shown that girls read for pleasure about 10 more minutes a day than boys. So this research lets us know that we need to develop a love of reading very young and continue to help students find books that they like so that they can be lifelong readers. Reading interests. Students need our help to find the kind of books that interest them. We can ask them the following questions. Sometimes parents say that I've asked questions. They say no, no, because they know that I'm talking about reading. But some great things that maybe you don't even need their answers for that you can do the research on your own is what types of TV shows do your students like? Are they watching cartoons? Can we get some books on cartoons? Are they watching comedies and love to laugh? Can we get some funny poetry books or books that are comedic? Number two, what is what are your favorite hobbies? What are the favorite hobbies of your student? Do they like to collect rocks? Uh, maybe geology, do they like to draw, maybe art books, what is something that they like to do on their free time and you can combine the book with that. Number three, what place would you like to visit? You can ask your student or you can just know, like I know here at home, one of my students, they are very interested in France, so get some books about France or the Eiffel Tower. Do they want to visit out of the country or are they interested in different states? Do they like sports? That's a good one too that you don't need an answer uh, from them because they know it's about reading and they're not going to give you a good answer. You know, do they love sports? And then you can hone in on that sport. Is it basketball? Is it soccer? Is it baseball? And something as funny as um, do they like or dislike their siblings? Do they love their siblings? There's a lot of books about that. And uh, there's a lot of fiction books about siblings not getting along. And though it's funny, they might want to read something like that. Read alouds. Read alouds. So studies indicate that the benefits of reading to your students, even after they can read on their own, is vital. The benefits of reading are good vocabulary, understanding good sentence structure, and also understanding complex words that other students who don't read with their family or on their own might not know, but your student might be ahead of the game because they might understand these words because you've read it to them and they've asked you questions about those words. And reading so a book that they need to read, it's a little bit longer, and I can tell that they're having a hard time. I say, how about you read two pages and I read one page? And that just, it's still helping, and it's still very beneficial. Club, that it's uh, family book clubs are good ways to continue to promote reading. Because we just don't give you the advice. Um, we try to look to researchers. We try to try it here in the lab and see if it works. But we do have here in our home book clubs. And with the student, you can ask questions and they can realize that um, 
once you read it's so personal you may have a different point of view than another person about what you're reading and that's okay read everywhere your student just try to read different things um read signs billboards packages even may actually you know a flyer to something have your student read it to you play games when you're reading you can read really slow really quick or use different voice my class students love it when we use different voices to read try to say what you're reading in shorter words so if the sentence is a little bit long challenge your student and say let's try to say that in four words and then it just becomes a game and they're learning they're reading and they're playing so it they don't even know that that they are doing most of the reading if you know how to sneak it in real well and I wanted to give you more reading apps you shared in episode three, some reading apps and episode two, but I wanted to share some new ones here in episode four, which is one of the apps is Bookster, and it's for young readers to learn new vocabulary, and they can record themselves reading, and that's always fun for kids, and you can, and the app can be free with an ebook. There's also Touchy Books app, and this app has quirky sounds and animations, and it has an easy star voting for students' favorite books, and it's free if you get two of their books. And also, we have Me Genius, where you highlight words for review, and it gives you a personalized element, and it's free and purchases. If you're watching just this video for the first time, I do want to tell you that one of my favorites is ABC Mouse. I've seen great improvements who use ABC Mouse. Their reading has improved and also their testing, state testing has improved. And lastly, I want to share with you my solid gold advice for reading which as you know at the beginning i said letter sounds and this is my favorite teaching video ever i like it because not only does it help students learn the letter sounds but also it's students sign language so some students different students learn in different ways. They learn by looking, by dancing, by moving their body, and see how they learn the latter sounds. And through the semester, as I go by, I'm testing them and making sure that they know their letter sounds. When students forget, I do the sign language to them, and that helps jog their memory if they're having a hard time. Letters and their sounds. Sing along. A is for a, a, apple. A, a, a. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it has helped you and that maybe you can use it with your younger students learning their letter sounds, learning to know how to read, because all of that very essential learning blocks. Thank you very much. See you in the next episode. I also wanted to share some literacy resources. I wanted to give a lot of resources this episode. So we have readingrockets.org. It's a national multimedia literacy initiative offering information and resources to kids that are struggling and how adults can help. We have Coloring Colorado. It's a premier national website for families that are ELL and it's providing free research-based information to help parents, schools, and communities. And then we have readaloud.org, which is um, single most important activity that parents can do 
And then you can listen to some great read alouds there. Upcoming questions, how can we empower families to support their students at home? What advice could we give parents and teachers to help improve communication? The last portion of our webinar. This is the response to the questions that we posed at the beginning. This is advice from teachers who have been in the district for many years and their masters in their craft of teaching. They share advice kindly with us on how students can have a successful school year. First is Ms. Mills. She holds a master's degree in special education. She shares, parents of younger students can work with them at home to help them learn how to log into Google Classroom and other online platforms the school uses so that they are prepared to do so independently in class. She also shares, parents can make sure students are checking their emails, to-do lists, and missing assignments daily. Parents can sign up for Google Classroom to receive emails regarding The students work. Masilla O shares three important tips. A, establish routines. Students should know the time to log in and when assignments are due. Routines are also helpful to avoid burnout. Using a timer to ensure that the student has time outdoors or away from technology is helpful as well. B, establish guidelines. Make sure your students know that they should be engaged during class and not surf websites while in class. Parents should check in regularly while students are online and communicate with the teacher to ensure students are engaged in class. C, establish expectations. Communicate with students what they are expected to complete based on assignments and teacher syllabus. Provide a reward system for students so they can work for something that they like or want. And lastly, we have Ms. McNulty and Ms. Harper. Ms. McNulty shares, Parents can help their students prepare for a successful digital school year by having step-by-step -step instruction with pictures on how to navigate all the programs we use in class. Creating a learning environment similar to school is ideal. Daily structured activities like bedtime, wake up time, getting dressed, lunch, recess, homework, and free time would all be examples of school-like environments. Next, we have Ms. Harper. Establish a routine in order to help the students stay on track. I would also suggest setting up a learning corner that is free of any distractions, which I believe would help them feel like they have a classroom type environment. Also, I believe that parents should encourage the students to participate in class discussions and activities. This will help them pay attention and stay engaged. Ms. Harper. I want to say thank you for joining me. Remember to please reach out to me with any questions if you need help with anything related to digital learning. Thank you.